I'm already crier. <laughs> I appreciate it, you all. Joaquin, on Thursday, did you say, we're just going to go ahead and throw out, like, there's no, we're going to reject normal? Was that what it was? We're going to reject normal, okay? And so if I speak today while crying, we're just rejecting normal, okay? <laughs> um, as Kali kind of alluded to this morning, um, when I sense the presence of the Lord and his love, I can't help but cry. He's so good. And um, I believe that, oh, goodness me, this is, we're going to get through this, guys. <laughs> we will. I'll get into, I'll get into drive. Um, but I believe he was showing me this morning that there are some that are, I believe that you're saying, I'm trying to connect the dots, and your heart is, I want to get there, and I want to experience joy, but I just don't know how yet, and you're trying to make sense of it, and I believe that he has sent me, his love, his love has sent me here today to connect with you, and um, this is my first time ever speaking at Joy. It may be my last, and that's okay. And I don't, I don't say that. It may be my last. Uh, like, no, like, I believe I have a message for today for people in this room with who love wants to meet with. And so I just encourage you to posture your heart because some of the things that I'm going to hit on have already been said about five or six times, but I believe that he's given me a way to say it in a new way because he's so after you and he so wants you to experience who he is and his joy that he's going to say it a whole nother way to help you get it because you don't have to get there. He's coming to you, okay? So we're going to open up with prayer. I actually by his grace, woke up with this um, verse the other morning on my heart. And so you can turn to Psalm 139, 23 if you want, but you don't have to because I'm just going to pray it over us this morning or this afternoon. It says this, God, I invite your searching gaze into my heart. Examine me through and through. Find out everything that may be hidden within me. Put to me the test and sift through all of my anxious cares. See if there is any path of pain I'm walking on and lead me back to your glorious, everlasting ways, the path that brings me back to you. And Father, we just thank you that you are here this afternoon. We thank you for all that you've already done, and we say thank you for all that still you're going to do. This weekend and moving forward, Father God, we thank you for your faithfulness to us, and Holy Spirit, we just say, have your way. I thank you that you're going to show us. You're going to examine our hearts. And you're going to show us the path into more of your love, the path back to you, your glorious ways in Jesus' name. So um, I have titled my message, Confessions of a Redeemed Analytic. <laughs> Confessions of a Redeemed Analytic. It's me. Hi. I'm the analytic. It's me. So you get that. I, um, about two years ago, so this is the seventh year of Joy Conference. I've been at all seven. But my joy journey started two years ago. And um, I believe I'm supposed to talk to you a little bit about that because I believe that just as I received an invitation for my joy journey, I believe that the Father is extending an invitation to you for your joy journey. Whether you've experienced this joy, the fullness thereof, or maybe you've just tasted it, I believe he's extending an invitation for all of us to go deeper into the journey of his joy. And so two years ago, um, I was experienced a storm in life, not like a literal storm, but a storm in life. And um, it was probably one of, it was the hardest storm I've ever gone through. Um, pressed on every side, emotions high, 
a lot of factors involved that I'm not going to go into today, but um, we'll just say my world was spinning. And um, one Sunday morning, I'm sitting here on the front row, and in all honesty, that's what I could do. I could show up. And that's all we have to do is show up. So I'm sitting on the front row, and worship's going on, and I'm just honestly sitting there. And um, out of nowhere, <laughs> I have my eyes closed, and I'm just soaking in his presence. And um, I sense that Jesus comes up to me in this chair, and he goes like this. Your name is Joy. <laughs> and a split second later, I said, without even thinking, I said, back to him, oh, you don't know me. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, right? I'm like, whoa. And of course, my analytical mind starts saying, a split second later, you just told Jesus that he doesn't know you. Like, what is that? Oh, like, and my, my, now my mind is like, oh. <gasps> And so I'm like back, like I'm like backpedaling, right? I'm like, no, 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 no. See, this is what I mean. When I say you don't know me, like I know you, like right, like we're good, because I'm like going to heaven and we're good. I know I know you, but what I mean is like you don't know me. See, you created me to be calculated. You created me to be analytical. You created me to be logical. I'm a rational person. I'm not this flamboyant personality. I'm not crazy. I'm not carefree. I'm reasonable. I'm logical. The conversation ended there. And I was like, but wait. Truth just called me joy. And I couldn't shake it. So I went on, you know, with church continues, keep pressing in. And um, as I'm just seeking him, weeks go by, and I hear this statement isn't God fun? Like, he, it's like, he's like, oh, I'm back again about that, you know? And it's like, we're going along, and he's good, and yes, you're good. And he's like, oh, yeah, that right there, we're going to go there again. Well, I start hearing this statement, and it's found in uh, Genesis 3-9. I think they only have verse 11 for PowerPoint, um, but the, ver the whole section is Genesis 3, and it says, then Yahweh God called Adam's name and asked, where are you? Adam answered, I heard your powerful presence moving in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Who told you you were naked? God said. Did you eat the fruit of the tree that I commanded you not to eat? And that's the phrase that I kept hearing over and over again. Who told you you were naked? Except I didn't hear who told you you were naked. I was hearing, who told you you weren't joyful? I don't know. See, I believe in the Garden of Eden, I don't believe it was God that told Adam that he was naked. And I personally don't even believe it was the enemy, the snake, that told Adam he was naked. I believe when he ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, his conscience was awakened. And when his conscience was awakened, he saw his identity and shame, a false identity, and shame entered in. And when he ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he saw himself outside of how God created him. And I believe that when we attach identity to things that we weren't created to be, to find our identity in, then we start to embrace those things. So much so that we're willing to forfeit who we're really created to be. And what I realized was, here I was holding on to, I'm a calculated person, I'm analytical, I'm strategic, this is who I am, this is who my boss has told me I am, this is my, where my strengths are found, this is who I am, and that's not joyful. But folks, joyful is not a personality. 
Joyful is not a personality assessment result. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. So either I get to hold on to an identity that tells me that I'm not joyful, or I get to hold on to an identity of who I really am and say, I'm a child of God. The tree of knowledge of good and evil, or the tree of life. And I believe Holy Spirit's love wants to unlock some lids this morning, this afternoon, of false identity. And can we take the false identity of not being, thinking that we're not created to be joyful beings? That's not me. That personality is not me. Every personality, if you're a child of God, was created to be joyful. And when we can surrender and lay at his feet false identities and we're willing to let those go for who he's really created to be, I told you guys he made it basic for you. Then we get to experience joy. Galatians, well, because Proverbs 23, 7 says, for as a man thinketh, so is he, right? So if I think I'm not joyful, am I going to be joyful? Is there any way of me even stepping into that if I'm determined that I'm not? No, because as a man thinketh, so is he. So let's find out who we really are. Galatians 5, through 25 says, but the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit within you is divine love in all its varied expressions. Joy that overflows, peace that subdues, patience that endures, kindness in action, a life full of virtue, faith that prevails, gentleness of heart, and strength of spirit. Keep in mind that we who belong to Jesus Christ have already experienced our crucifixion. For everything connected with our self-life was put to death on the cross and crucified with Messiah. If the Spirit is the source of our life, we must also allow the Spirit to direct every aspect of our lives. Evidence of you being a child of God is his fruit displayed in your heart, which includes joy. So evidence of his Spirit should be joy in your life. And we have to cling more on to being a child of God and finding our identity and who he's created us to be than a personality type or what we think strengths or weaknesses lead up to. Romans 8, 14. The mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit, and you did not receive the spirit of religious duty, leading you back into the the fear of never being good enough. But you have received the spirit of full acceptance, enfolding you into the family of God. And you will never feel orphaned, for as he rises up within us, our spirits join him in saying the words of tender affection, beloved father. For the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us as he whispers into our innermost being, you, you, you are are God's beloved child. Happiness is contingent upon circumstances lining up and life being quote unquote easy. But joy is contingent upon me receiving the Holy Spirit's power and work in my life. That's all it is. See the truth is is that you're a child of God. The truth is is that you were created to be a joy container just like this. Well, you're actually better than this. You're way better than this. And his joy is way better than this. But the truth is, is that you were created to be joy-filled, joyful, joyful. So no matter what you feel, no matter who you think you are, what you feel like defines you, may this define us and not a personality assessment, weaknesses, strengths, personas. We're children of God, and we have the Holy Spirit residing within us, and the fruit of that is his joy. Say, I am a child of God. I have his joy in me. So back to this storm. 
Uh, the storm's still going on. More stressed out than I've ever been, in complete honesty. And um, tensions and factors and all these things were just swirling, so much so that I actually ended up seeing a counselor, which I absolutely promote seeing spirit-filled counselors if you're needing help. Holy Spirit is the number one counselor, but if you need help, don't try to go through things alone. It's okay. Reach out. It's okay. There's no shame in the counselor game. There ain't no shame in the counselor game. <laughs> we'll just go ahead and go after that lie. But as I'm meeting with this counselor, I'm just like, I mean, it was bad. And I'm like, ah, oh, and I'm pouring out, what if this? And what if they think this? And what is happening to this? And da, da, da. I'm just going on and on and on and on. And I finally am like, and that's why I'm stressed out. And that's why I can't think. It's consuming my thoughts, which renewing the mind is a whole other powerful message that go, go to YouTube about renewing the mind. But um, not just any YouTube, by the word of God. But thoughts were swirling, and I couldn't find my ground. And the counselor pauses and says, oh. Your analyzation is a form of control. And I'm like, what? No, see, I have no control. That's why I'm freaking out. And he's like, no. no. He said, you're trying to find control any way you can, even if it is just up here. And I was like, what? The joy journey is a fun journey. Um, so I said, well, okay, well, if I'm not supposed to have control and I'm, I need to, like, what is, so what do I do? And he said, well, ask Holy Spirit. And so I said, Holy Spirit, what do I do? And he said, can you guys guess what he said? You guys know. Trust. And I'm like, yeah, 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 I know, I know, I trust you. But what do I need to do? I'm really good. Like, I can do something. I can build a shed, right? I can build a shed. But he said, no, your job, your responsibility, what you need to do is trust. I'll try. First Peter 5, 7. Pour out all of your worries and stress upon him and... Leave them there, for he always tenderly cares for you. Pour out all of your worries and stress upon him and leave them there, for he always tenderly cares for you. I'm going to kind of go fast through these. Psalms 55, 22. So here's what I've learned through it all. Leave all your cares and anxieties at the feet of the Lord and measureless grace will strengthen you. Here's what I've learned through it all. Leave all your cares and your anxieties at the feet of the Lord and measureless grace will strengthen you. His grace is not found in our control. His grace is found in our surrender and trust. His grace, his supernatural power and favor is found when all we need to do is leave it there and trust him. And measureless grace comes. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Let joy be your continual feast. Like he made way for that. Let joy be your continual feast. Make your life a prayer, and in the midst of everything, be always giving thanks, for this is God's perfect plan for you in Christ Jesus. So what I'm not saying is I think sometimes we can just deny problems are going on, right? We don't need to have our head in the sand. We don't need to pretend like things aren't happening, but we also don't have to just sit in it. What he's telling us to do is when we can, he, what a good, good father he is, you guys, that we can pour out 
what's concerning us. We can pour out the anxieties. We can pour out the problems. But what comes with that is we have to leave it there, right? How many times do we want to be like, ah, and then, thank you, I feel better now, and keep going, right? He says, no, my grace is found when you leave it there. His joy is found when you leave it there. You know, I was thinking about this. Joaquin hit on control last night. And I was thinking about you guys. And I was like, you know, I, like, I so, and I still, I'm not, I have not, it's a journey for all of us, right? And so I'm thinking, and I just remember being in this place of this, seeing the river that's talked about in Ezekiel. And I believe some of you, like, as we talked about the river last night, it's like way steep and going deeper And I believe some of you are like, but I don't know how to swim. I believe he's saying you're not supposed to swim in the river. He carries you. He carries you through the river and you float through the river. You're not meant to swim through the river. Because being in his river doesn't require any work or effort. Sarah Young has a quote that I saw, and it said, each moment we can choose to practice his presence or practice the presence of problems, but we cannot do both. So just as David encourages us to do, what Paul encourages us to do is we take our problems, the things that we want to have control of, and guys, I get it. It's like, no, no, no. I know how this is supposed to turn out. I want to protect them from this. I know this can't happen and we end up putting on that heavy burden that we weren't created to carry. I had a vision one time when all this was going on, and I saw it, it was as if I saw the throne of God, and it was ginormous. And I saw myself trying to climb up this throne. And it was exhausting, but I was so determined that I was supposed to sit in his throne. That throne was made for one person, one being, and that's God, not me. And as long as I'm trying and striving to climb into his seat, there's going to be a heavy burden, and I will be, need his love to unlock me. of the control that I'm trying to have in situations in my own life. So I was trying to have control, and I was sitting on the throne of, of my heart and trying to gain control in these situations, but I was also trying to sit in his throne because I wanted to be able to control everyone else. It doesn't work, guys. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Let me, let me, I guess, let me help you. There's no good fruit in you trying to control everything. It won't work. But when you can surrender the control and trust that he's a good, good father, and you know that he's perfecting everything that concerns you, and you know that Jesus is at the right hand of the father interceding on your behalf right now, and you know that he has good plans for you, plans for hope and a future, to prosper you and not harm you, when he knows that he's straightening the, when you know that he's straightening the path beneath your feet, and he, when you know that his word is leading and guiding you, when you know that he is perfecting everything that concerns you, that's where joy is found. So I finally get to this place where I'm like, okay, I'll let my role be trust. It doesn't seem so fun, but that's fine. I'll trust. It's way better that way, guys. Just, it's just, it's better that way. Um, about a year and a half, the storm's still going on. I'm, like, it's, it's, it got crazy. And I'm finally, by the grace of God and his love, got me to a place where I was able to experience a peace that surpasses all understanding and a joy unspeakable. So the storm is still going on, and there are all kinds of things involved. But I just, I had a peace and I had a hope and I knew that he was at work. And so I'm walking along and I'm actually getting ready to go into a meeting about this storm. 
And I'm ready, ready, about ready to walk into this meeting, and I hear this thought, and it says, you need to act like you care a little bit more. Like You need to be more concerned so that they know you care. And I'm like, yes. And right after that, I hear the voice of love says, do not forfeit what I paid my life for. And I knew that in that moment, I had the opportunity to walk in his supernatural peace and joy and fear God, or I could forfeit that and fear man. And I had a choice to make. So I actually walked into that meeting and I said, I know right here, it looks like I should be, I know that it seems as though I should be worried and freaked out and concerned and stressed out, but you guys, I'm experiencing a peace and a joy that is, I can't even explain it. And I care. But he's so good that it's his strength that's sustaining me and it's his grace that I received. And so just because you're walking in a joy and a peace does not mean that you don't care. I think sometimes when we're wanting to help people and support people in their journeys, if they've gotten a diagnosis or, or things are going on, we think that we're doing them a favor. And empathy is a real thing, right? But we've got to be careful to abide in him and stay in the fruit of the spirit and not think we step out of that for their own stuff. Does that make sense? So I decide to go to this meeting. I'm like, guys, just so you know, I am joyful. I have this peace and it's a gift and I care very deeply, but I'm going to stay in this place. And it's not at all that I don't care, but I do know that he's at work and I can trust him and he is moving. And I was praying about it later and I felt like the Lord said, you know, you pray on earth as it is in heaven for miracles, signs, and wonders. But don't you think it's a miracle and on earth as it is in heaven for you to have my joy in a storm? So doesn't that include on earth as it is in heaven? Us abiding in his spirit and experiencing his fruit is just as much on earth as it is in heaven as seeing the signs, miracles, and wonders. It's being who we're created to be. It's getting back to the garden of how he created Adam. It's the garden where we get to be with our beloved and be with our father and be the child that he created us to be. That's his design for today. Romans 14, 17 through 18 says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of rules about food or drink, but is in the realm of the Holy Spirit, filled with righteousness, peace, and joy. We hear this a lot, but get this. Verse 18 says, Serving the anointed one by walking in these kingdom realities pleases God and earns the respect of others. So we may think that when people are going through things or even when I'm going through my own thing that I need to look a certain way. But actually the word says when I'm abiding in his spirit, when I'm walking in the spirit in kingdom realities, not only does it please God, but it earns the respect of others. It's funny how our mind can twist things, right? Fear of man says what will people think? I don't want to be too much. This is how it's supposed to look. Fear of God says, I'm going to choose to walk in these kingdom realities and be who I was created to be no matter what people think. To be so set that Jesus is going to get the full manifestation of the price that he paid in my life that it does not matter anymore what people think. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I look silly. It doesn't matter. Proverbs 29, 25 says, fear and intimidation is a trap that holds you back. But when you place your confidence in the Lord, you will be seated in the high place. See, fear of man, as we open up ourselves to him, his love can unlock us from fear of man. What people think, what people may do, 
rejection like Tim talked about, looking silly, or we can choose to fear God and experience joy unspeakable. I believe we have to be more determined to experience the fullness of who he is and who he created you to be than what people think. He's worthy of our worship, guys. He's worthy of it all. He's worthy of our thoughts, of our actions, and he's worthy of us choosing to abide in his spirit and be who he really called us to be. Roland Wharton, he wrote this book called The Surprising, the Surprising Power of Joy. It's actually at the merch booth over there. I highly recommend it if you've never read it. It's really, really good. But he says, joy is a byproduct of being immersed in his truth and his love. See, so what I'm not saying is let's, let's go on a hunt here and see what we can find, what lives are in our life that we need to get rid of. Like, it's not us doing anything, you guys. It's us just opening up ourselves to receive more of his love and more of his truth of who, what he says and who we, of who we are. And his love starts to wash away the different lids in our life. It's his love that's calling us in and extending an invitation for his love and his joy and it's his love that tells us who we really are. See, he set it all on the table, guys. He's put it all out there. And we just get to choose how much. This means allowing him to unlock us from the lids of false identities. For you are created to be a joy-filled being. Being who you were created and designed to be. This means allowing him to unlock the lids of control and surrendering situations. Rather than sitting in the presence of problems, choosing to sit in his presence. For in his presence is fullness of joy. And allowing him to unlock us from the lids of fear of man. What people think and living for an audience of one. I'm going to pray. We're going to take a couple minutes here just to allow his love to wash over us. If Holy Spirit shows you somewhere, he wants to just remind you of truth or wash his love over you maybe and remove fear in your life, we're just going to give him an opportunity to do that. So Holy Spirit, we do say thank you. We thank you that you're leading and guide us, guiding us into all truth. We thank you that your perfect love removes all fear. We thank you that you, can, you are trustworthy. We thank you that you are a good father. We thank you, Father, for creating us to be joy-filled containers of your love. We thank you for the abundance that you've provided we thank you for setting the table where we can partake of all your goodness of what you paid for. And I just ask, Holy Spirit, that you would just show us. Show if there's a, if there's a lid in our life where we need to allow you to unlock us. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would help us all to respond, to go deeper to your invitation of love and experience more of your joy. So we just pause right now, Holy Spirit, and say, have your way.
I thank you for helping us to trust you with situations that we're trying to keep control over. I thank you for helping us to trust you, even when we're having, trying to have control over our own selves. Just help us to let go. I thank you that your love is inviting us deeper to be who we are truly called to be and to know who you truly are. There's a quote by Carl Martin, and it's a little lengthy, but I wanted to read it, present it to you guys and read it to you today. I thought it was really good. It says this, so what stops you from becoming the fullest version of the person that God had in mind when he created you? It's not him that's stopping you. It's the things in you that whisper to you that you cannot be the things you hope for. It's not usually prohibitions, it's inhibitions. What stops us are the lies we believe that are not true about who we are. What stops us are the wounds aren't unhealed because they were never exposed, but rather we buried. What stops us are the games we play to protect ourselves from the reality that might grow us. What stops us is we don't believe the very thing that God speaks over us. He is the only one who has the right to name you. He's the only one who can tell you who you really are. He's the only one whose commentary really counts. Child of God, your creator, the one who made you for his glory, He's named you, and he calls you joy. Come and return to the joy and be the joy carrier you were created to be.